Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Premanande Haribo Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Pricharine Nirvise Shashanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nesta Preshu Vabadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 11, The Childhood Pastimes of Krishna, beginning text number 19. Hmm. Pashya Pashya Vayashyamste Matri Mrishtan Malankritan Twamcha Matakrita Haro Vihar Viharsva Swalankrita Pashya Pashya Vayasyamste Matri Mrishtan Swalankritan Twamcha Snata Krita Haro Vihar Asva Swalankrita Pashya Pashya Vayasyamste Matre Mrishtan Swalankritan Twamcha Snata Krita Haro Viharasva Swalankrita Pashya Pashya Vayasyamste Matre Mrishtan Swalankritan Vamchas Nata Krita Haro Viharas Vaswalankrita Pashya 
Pasya Pasya Vayasyamste Matre Mrishtan Swalankritam Twam Chasnata Kritaharo Vihara Svasvalankrita Pasya Pasya Jassi Jassi Vayashyan Boys of your age Te Your Matre Mrishtan Cleansed by their mothers Su Alankritan Decorated with nice ornaments. Twamcha, you also. Snata, after taking a bath. Krita, krita alaha, alaharo. And eating your lunch. Viharasva, enjoy with them. Su Alankrita, fully decorated like them. Translation, just see how all your playmates of your own age have been de cleansed and decorated with beautiful ornaments by their mothers. You should come here and after you have taken your bath, eaten your lunch and been decorated with ornaments, you may play with your friends again. Purport. Generally, young boys are competitive. If one friend has done something, another friend also wants to do something. Therefore, Mother Yashoda pointed out how Krishna's playmates were decorated so that Krishna might be induced to decorate himself like them. Text 20. My dear Maharaj Parikshit, because of intense love and affection, Mother Yashoda, Krishna's mother, considered Krishna, who was at the peak of all opulences, to be her own son. Thus she took Krishna by the hand, along with Balaram, and brought them home where she performed her duties by fully bathing them, dressing them, and feeding them. Purport. Krishna is always neat, clean, and opulent, and does not need to be washed, bathed, or dressed. Yet Mother Yashoda, because of affection, considered him her ordinary child and did her duties to keep her, to keep her son brilliant. Text 21. Sri Sukadeva Goswami continued, Then, one time, having seen the great disturbances in Brihadvan, all the elderly persons among the cowherd men, headed by Nanda Maharaj, assembled and began to consider what to do to stop the continuous disturbing situations in Braja. Text 22. At this meeting of all the inhabitants of Gokul, a cowherd man named Upananda, who was the most mature in age and knowledge, and was very experienced according to time, circumstances, and country, made this suggestion for the benefit of Rama and Krishna. Text 20, 23. He said, My dear friends, the cowherd man, in order to do good to this place, go cool. We should leave it because so many disturbances are always occurring here just for the purpose of killing Rama and Krishna. Text 24. The child Krishna 
simply by the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead was somehow or other rescued from the hands of the Rakshasi Putana who was determined to kill him. Then again, by the mercy of the Supreme Godhead, the handcart missed falling upon the child. 25. Then again, the demon Trinavart, in the form of a whirlwind, took the child away into the dangerous sky to kill him. But the demon fell down onto a slab of stone. In that case also, by the mercy of Lord Vishnu or his associates, the child was saved. Text 26, even the other day, neither Krishna nor any of his playmates died from the falling of the two trees. Although the children were near the trees or even between them, this also is to be considered the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 27, all these incidences are being caused by some unknown demon. Before he comes here to create another disturbance, it is our duty to go somewhere else with the boys until there are no more disturbances. Purport. Opananda suggests, by the mercy of Lord Vishnu, Krishna has always been saved from so many dangerous incidents. Now let us leave this place and go someplace where we may worship Lord Vishnu undisturbed before there is another cause of death from some demon who may attack us. A devotee desires only that he may execute devotional service undisturbed. Actually, we see, however, that even during the presence of, during the presence of Krishna, when Nanda Maharaj and the other cowherd men had the Supreme Personality of Godhead in their presence, there were disturbances. Of course, in every case, Krishna came out victorious. The, in, the instruction we may derive from this is that we should not be disturbed by so-called disturbances. There have been so many disturbances to our Krishna conscious movement but we cannot give up our forward march. On the contrary, people are receiving this movement very enthusiastically all over the world. And they are purchasing literature about Krishna consciousness with redoubled energy. Thus, there are both encouragements and disturbances. This was so even in Krishna's time. Om Magyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakalpa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhaevacha Patitanam pavan ebyo vaishnavibyo namo namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're hearing about the childhood pastimes of Lord Krishna and how in the 
home of Nanda Maharaj, the residents of Vrindavan had seen so many disturbances. Different demons had come there to kill Lord Krishna when he was only a little child, just born, only a few days old. At that time, Putana had come. And of Lord Krishna, of course, had revealed this Putana as a Rakshasi. Although she had di di disguised herself as a gopi, she, Lord Krishna knew her identity and he revealed her nature. And then, after Putana, then Lord Krishna was placed below the cart, below a cart full of different goods. And the cart fell apart. Different objects all fell. But Lord Krishna, although he was laying underneath the cart, he was unharmed. And then the next demon was Trinavarta, the whirl who came in the form of a whirlwind and picked up Krishna into the air. But Trinavarta also was destroyed and he came crashing down onto stone and in this way he gave up his life. So the residents of Vrindavan seeing all of these disturbances, they decided, or at least under the direction, the advice of Upananda, the senior cowherd man, he advised them, we, sh we better move to a different place because so many disturbances here, different demons. Of course, they're not fully aware that Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself. They are thinking it's only by the grace of Vishnu that baby Krishna was not harmed. They, have, they didn't fully appreciate Lord Krishna's identity. Although they did know that from the name giving ceremony, Gargamuni had told them that this child will be as, as good as Narayan and there will be many dangers. There will be different obstacles which will appear, but he will pass over all of the obstacles. Anyway, so not all the coward men had remembered these things, these words of Gargamuni, but some of them. So Upananda is encouraging Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda and the other Brijbasi people, but better you move. Don't just stay here in Brahadvan. Go to, can go to some other place, go to Goku. Hmm? So, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada points out how disturbances are there. Even in the time of Lord Krishna, disturbances are there. Similarly, in the time of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, disturbances were there. The Chankazi tried to stop the Sankirtan movement and they broke the Madanga. So uh, Srivas Pandit was in great fear that any time the Muslim ruler may come and arrest him. He was very afraid. But Lord Chaitanya did not have any fear for the situation. He, of course, performed the civil disobedience, the first civil disobedience movement, and he gathered everyone to go and march to the Chankazi and protest, that, to tell the Chankazi, we're not going to stop Sankirtan. So, Prabhupada points out, he said that similarly our Krishna consciousness movement faces many disturbances. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, in discussing the Chankazi incident, 
Prabhupada points out, he said that the fact that the uh, authorities are opposing and making difficulty for the Krishna consciousness movement, said this is proof, this is proof that it's a bona fide religious process. Something which is not so bona fide, they don't worry about. But because they know this Krishna conscious process is very genuine, so they're very much worried about it. And they try to stop it. So Prabhupada writes that we should not feel discouraged when we are challenged and when we are opposed by different demoniac or atheistic governments which try to stop the Krishna conscious movement. Rather, we should continue to go on. Just like in Australia, the devotees were greatly harassed there in their sankirtan and book distribution. And Prabhupada told the devotees that don't pay the fine. He said, if you get arrested, don't pay any fines. Just go to jail. So the devotees did that. You know, they were going out regularly on Sankirtan and they were going into the different public areas and distributing books and they regularly they had to face arrest and taken to the court and then go to jail and spend some time in the jail. And when Prabhupada came there, then the newspaper reporters questioned Prabhupada about this. They said that your movement is having some difficulties. The authorities are not appreciating your movement. And Prabhupada replied, he said, well, they have not crucified us yet. So Prabhupada, you know, he, he didn't worry about it too much. He encouraged the devotees, go on. And, and the devotees continued. And uh, now you can see they have a very successful relationship there with the authorities. Somehow they managed to cooperate and to get the support of the different local governments. And nowadays people are highly appreciative of the work of the Krishna consciousness movement. We saw also in London, first of all at Bury Place, we had a lot of trouble in the original temple in London, Bury Place, a rented property. The problem was neighbors. <laughs> because you have a small place in the center of London, so the noise is a problem for the neighbors. It was an older building, and when we would have kirtan, the whole building would vibrate. So people living in other parts of the building, their whole house would vibrate when we would have kirtan. So uh, the, the neighbors tried to close us down immediately, but for many years they couldn't do it. Somehow Krishna kept the temple going. But then eventually somehow they managed to get some restriction on us and to make it not a public place of worship. So then the devotees had to relocate. They found another property which was nearby and which they were able to purchase. And so it was a big obstacle. Actually, while we were living there at Bury Place, people would regularly come and we had that big glass window there and people would throw bricks through it, break it regularly. They'd come in the middle of the night and do it. Again and again, they'd come and throw big bricks into the brook, break the glass window, big glass window. And even we put, 
we put shattered proof glass which wouldn't break. Still they would come and find something to do, some way to try to damage. <laughs> so, so much obstacles, but the devotees persevered. Then again, when we got Bhaktivedanta Manor, they tried to close down Bhaktivedanta Manor because Bhaktivedanta Manor was in the residential, conservative village in the suburbs of London. Very wealthy, aristocratic people were living there and they didn't like that we'd made our temple there and they saw different, many Indian families coming there and visiting. And so it was a quiet country area country village, but on Sundays so many people would come and so cars would be everywhere parked and the neighbors were very upset. So they got back to Vedanta Manor, they were trying to close the whole place down. And of course the devotees fought and they went from one court to another court, to the higher court, to the Supreme Court, then they even went to the European Court. <laughs> fighting, you know, and almost every case, you know, we could never win, we could never get victory, but kept fighting, kept fighting, and then they had big protest marches, and they got so much support, because there were so many favorable people in London, and we convinced them that if they close us down, in the future they're going to close you down too. So we told them, you know, you better come and help us because if they close us down, in the future they're going to close you down too. You know, the Sikhs and the other people and the God, all, the God, all the other temples, they'll all be closed down. If, if they close us down, they'll close you down too. So, so many people came to, to support when they had the protest march. And the devotees were also working very well. They were going to meet different politicians, local politicians, and they found favorable people willing to help them and support them. So they gradually, they got more and more public support. And, you know, different articles appeared in the newspapers favorably about the, the move, about the temple, that, you know, if you can't have a temple, you know, then it's not very good. What kind of country is this? We don't want to have a temple. We're supposed to be open to all different religious processes. And if you're going to close down their temple, it's not. So it was a big thing, big, you know, it was all in the headlines, newspaper, the whole of London stopped when they had the protest marches and they brought all famous people. They got, you know, famous cricketers, <laughs> different people like that to come to speak on, on the behalf of the devotees. And finally, they worked it out that we would make a new entrance for the temple. And so, it, you know, they had to buy some land. They bought some neighboring land to make the new entrance. And in that way, the, the people in the village were pacified because instead of using the usual entrance which came through their village, we made a new road with a new entrance. So in this way they managed to keep the, the manor open, but it was so many threats, so many obstacles. Just like we see in countries like Russia also, so many obstacles were there, so many difficulties. In Russia they didn't want this Krishna conscious movement. At one time, they were saying the biggest threats to the Soviet uh, society are rock and roll, Coca-Cola, and Hare Krishna. So the three threats to the society. <laughs> so, you know, somehow or other, the devotees persevered, although they suffered a lot. Many went to jail and they were put in mental hospitals and they were given drugs to try to change their mind and their thinking. 
So, so many obstacles were there, but you know, Prabhupada said, he said, this, this communist thing would not last. And of course, now China, Russia is not communist. Although China is still communist, Russia is not communist. And the USSR broke up into so many countries, different countries. Still, there are challenges. It's not easy, like in Russia. People think, they will say, oh, Hare Krishna, this is, this is Indian thing. We are Russian. We want Russian religion. We don't want Indian religion. We don't want this Prabhupada. Yeah. They will say these things like that. So, so many obstacles are there. And although it's not socialist anymore, but the same people run the country. You have very powerful politicians who run the country and they support the local tradition. They're not so open-minded to support uh, new things coming into the country. Krishna consciousness is like something, something new, something imported from some other place. So, it's not always appreciated. So, Prabhupada understood there would be obstacles, there would be difficulties. But he encourages us to tolerate these difficulties, go forward. Here in this particular case, Upananda is telling the, the Nanda Maharaj, better we move to another place. So sometimes, sometimes we do have to move. Just like I said in London, we were in Bury Place, we had to move, you know? Okay, move to a different place. So sometimes, you know, some particular place is not so favorable and you have to move. Just like they had the Gurukula. Prabhupada, the Gurukula was established in Dallas. But Prabhupada heard how so many different obstacles were there, different objections, and Prabhupada understood wasn't very suitable to keep the Guru Kula system there in America, and he moved everybody to India. And here in India, you can have Guru Kul without any problem. Rather, it's appreciated. It's a nice, respectable system of education. But not everywhere can understand these things. Just like in, even in India, sometimes you do kirtan and sometimes neighbors also complain. Of course, here in India, you have a temple, many people want to be near the temple. Just like in Pune, when they built their temple in Pune, it was out of the city and there, were, there was nothing there much. But then so many new apartments came up around because people wanted to be where the temple was. They didn't want to be far from the temple. And similarly, you see that in Chennai. They built the temple out from the city. Now so many apartment buildings, houses and stuff have come up around the temple there because people like to be near the temple. So, India's special place. Not everywhere is like that. Some other countries, maybe not so favorable. Obstacles. Just like in Russia, they tried to ban the Bhagavad Gita. Some man took the Bhagavad Gita and he found so many things in the Bhagavad Gita which he said are objectionable and this is not proper book which we should allow to be distributed in Russia. He tried to ban it. But with the help of politicians from India, in the Russian-Indian relationship, it helped to win the approval. Finally, they managed to continue printing it. So, Kali Yuga, what is known as religion is irreligion. And what is actually religion, people will call it irreligion. We will always get objections, obstacles, people trying to stop us. 
Harinam Sankirtan. People will say it's a nuisance. Even in M Mumbai, they tried to stop Sankirtan one time. They said this is just a nuisance, disturbing us. And when Prabhupada heard, Prabhupada said, send more devotees, increase the Sankirtan. He didn't say stop, he said increase the Sankirtan. So Prabhupada was never one to throw in the towel, <laughs> you know. You throw in the towel if you're in a fight, you throw in the towel, it's, it's a way of quitting, you know. Okay, throw in the towel, we're, we're defeated, I give up. But Prabhupada would never give up, you know, <laughs> fight, fight. The Kshatriyas uh, are happy when they get a good fight. Just like the Bombay temple, the Juhu temple, to buy the land, the man was trying to cheat. He was trying to take the money and keep the land. And so it was a big battle. And this man who was trying to cheat us, he had a, he had a lot of support from the local government. And so the devotees had a lot of harassment. They tried, the, the, the devotees, some devo they had, the police came there one day and they tried to arrest, they arrested all the devotees and they tried to, wanted to break the temple. And so many problems were there at the Juhu temple. But today it's successful. Even here in Mayapur, we had problems, right? One time before the devotees, several devotees were arrested. It was Bhavananda at the time. Bhavananda was there with all of the, and they were taken to Navadweep as arrested for some false charge. So Prabhupada understood there's going to be opposition. In different places there'll be opposition. Just like in Vrindavan, he was worried about the, the Kasko Swamis there, that they would not be so favorable because Prabhupada was initiating Westerners. So they were like, uh, so Prabhupada was very careful. He, he told, he had them come to install the deities at the opening of the Krishna Balaram temple. And uh, here in Mayapur, Prabhupada was worried about the God brothers. With some god brothers wouldn't be so favorable to Prabhupada being here and having land here. Tried to so Prabhupada was conscious that not everybody is supporting this Krishna consciousness movement. But somehow or other, continue, don't give up, tolerate the difficulties, fight. And you know, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Yatya, Yatra Yogeshwaro Parto, Yatra Parto Danodara, Tatra Shri Vijayo Budhir, Dhruvani Tirma Tirmana. The, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, or Sanj, Sanjay said, Sanjay is telling Dhritarashtra, wherever there is Krishna, the master of all mistakes, and Arjuna, the expert bowman, there will be victory, morality, extraordinary power and opulence. Yeah, who could imagine that there would be opulence here in Mayapur when you were living in a thatched hut up there in the middle of the rice fields in 1972? Who could imagine there'd be opulence? Yeah, but so much opulence. Now a big, multi huge temple is coming up. We hope one day it will open. So obstacles will always come there. This is expected. That is proof that this is a bona fide, this is a genuine process. We just have to be uh, determined to go on, to fight, not to give up. Uh, just like Prabhupada gives the example, when you cross the ocean, you go in the ship, you have to expect there will be some big waves. But when the waves get big, you don't get off the boat. If you get off the boat, then you're finished. No way. You stay in the boat and gradually the boat will pass over the storm and come to the shore. So similarly, 
in Krishna consciousness, there's always challenges, there's always obstacles to be met and overcome. We have to go on with great determination, right? Determination is required. In Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada gives an example about determination. The little sparrow who lost her eggs to the ocean. When the, ocean, the sparrow had built its nest too near to the shore of the ocean and one day the ocean came in and washed away her nest and took away her eggs. So the little sparrow was so upset at losing her eggs that she told the ocean, I'm going to drink you dry. So, of course, it's ridiculous. How could a little sparrow drink the ocean dry? But she was so determined, she began to drink. And she was drinking and drinking. And Garuda, the king of the birds, he got news that this little bird is doing this. That's so determined to get her eggs back. So Garuda came there and he told the god of the ocean, you give back her eggs or I will drink you dry. And so Garuda is very powerful. Garuda, he could do something because he's the carrier of Lord Vishnu. So he's a great devotee and he has the power of the Supreme Lord. So with the threat of Garuda, the ocean returned the eggs to the sparrow. So that's a nice example of determination. Determination is required. That we must have that determination to go on and to utsahan nischayat dayaryat. Hmm? Like Dhruva Maharaj. Dhruva Maharaj very determined to get his kingdom. Does great austerities and in six months the Supreme Lord comes and fulfills his desires. So the same way in spreading Krishna consciousness, not everything happens immediately. It takes time. It takes time. We have seen in the beginning of our Krishna consciousness movement how many, how much we struggled. We could not pay the rent. We didn't have money to pay the rent for the property where we, where we were living. And so many people harassing, people opposing. Prabhupada told us, he said, in the beginning, they will laugh at you. First, you know, when, we first, when they first saw Hare Krishna, people thought it was a joke. You know, they, they laugh at us. They thought, this will never last. You know, this, another fad, another trend. You see them for some time, then they go away, they give up. So the people laugh at the in the beginning. In the beginning, they will laugh. Then they will hate you. They saw that we're very per persistent, but that we continue. We're still here. We're still going on. The Harinam Sankirtan is still going out regularly. So they they get angry. They get opposed to it. They try to stop it. But he said, finally, they will join. So he said, this is you, the, the trend usually. In the beginning they laugh, then they hate you, then they end up joining you. So we have to just simply have confidence and faith in what we're doing is right. And what we're doing will work. This process is very powerful and it's authorized. It's authorized by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And if we continue, then it will come out successful. Okay, any questions? Panka Jangari Prabhu. Iceland, Sweden, the, 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 religious tradition, Christianity there, if they, when they, when they print Bible, they have to print in the Bible 
this, uh, this, uh, this could be injurious to mental health. Huh? Could affect your mental health. They have to print that by law in there. <laughs> this will... They have to print in the Bible that this, this could be injurious to mental health. Dangerous. Dangerous to mental health. The Bible. They have to put, print that inside the Bible. Wow. <laughs> I see. But the, you know, Krishna, he wants, he wants everyone to become a devotee. He wants everyone to turn to him and go back to him. Why does he allow so many obstacles in, the, in for his devotees when they're trying to preach his message? It's what he wants. He's a controller. He can do anything. Why doesn't he make it easy? Why doesn't Krishna make it easier for us? Why does he make it so difficult for us? Why does he make so many obstacles? <laughs> well, he wants to show how resolutely determined the devotees are. He wants to bring out that determination in the devotee. He wants to show how they're fixed, that they're not going to give up, no matter what happens. If it's too easy, you know, you get something too easy, you don't appreciate it. An easy going light of sense gratification is not good for people. But the more difficult something is, the harder you work for it, the more you appreciate it. There's a story uh, how the young man wanted to inherit his father's wealth. So the father told the son, you want to get my wealth, you go and earn some money first yourself. So the son, he'd never earned any money in his life. He didn't know how to earn any money. So mother gave him some money. She gave him some money. And so he came, look, Bob, look, father, I got some money. So the father took the money, he threw it in the fire. And the son went, oh. And the father said, see, you didn't earn that money. You didn't earn that money yourself. You don't know the value of money. When you go and earn money yourself, then you'll value it. So the son was, he heard this, he went away. And he went far away from his home. And he found a job and he got to work and he earned money and he saved up money and then after some time he came back with the money he said here this is the money I've earned this money myself again the father took the money he threw it in the fire this time the son came running forward and grabbed the money he said I worked hard for that money so you see it's like that because he worked for the money he valued it more but if you get something too easy, you don't appreciate it so much. That's a problem. That's one of the dangers, you know, that we're handing over this temple to the next generation. You know, we work for it, we're working for it to build it, but the people who come after us, they're just inheriting it. We don't know how much they will take care of it. But, of course, Prabhupada left the movement. He, when Prabhupada expired, you know, he'd established the movement. And we developed it. We developed the movement more after Prabhupada left. But in 1977, how our movement was and how it's now, there's a tremendous growth. So many centers, so many more temples and books and everything. So our movement has expanded. We hope it will continue to expand. Prabhupada would say, if you, cannot exp if you cannot expand more, at least maintain what I've given you. At least don't let it fall apart. At least maintain it. You know, if people say, oh, now is this vi virus, nobody's coming to temple, we'll close the temple, so no need to worship the deities anymore. People may think like that, oh, we'll stop the deity worship, or I'll take the deities to my home, I'll just do the puja in my house. We don't need the temple anymore. 
Now we have to understand these are all obstacles to help us, to make us stronger in Krishna consciousness. To make us think more about how to serve Krishna. But if it's, everything is just made very easy, we won't think. We'll just sit back, oh nice, nice Mahaprasadam, everything's very good. But when there's difficulties, we're fighting more, we're more conscious what we have to do, how to, how to improve things. Hmm? Any other question? Maharaj, I'm very much inspired by your class. I offer my respectful obeisances unto your lotus feet. Please tell me, what is the relationship between determination and faith? <laughs> what is the relationship between determination and faith? Well, yeah, you could say they're both required. And they are connected. If you have strong faith, then you should also be determined to continue in Krishna consciousness no matter what happens. One devotee used to say, even if everyone else gives up Krishna consciousness and goes away, I'm not going to give up. I will continue. I'll go and make some new devotees and we will establish again another temple. Even if we close this temple and you all go away, I'll go and find new people to become Krishna conscious. So that is faith. And the, of course it's also determination. So the two things are related. They're interrelated. Determination means you have to, con you have to control your senses. If, if, if your senses are not controlled, it will be difficult to be determined. But it's very important to maintain our spiritual practice. We have to be determined. And this requires controlling the mind and senses. Faith can be based on, uh, one may have good knowledge, good realization, good understanding that can also be related to faith. Faith can be developed by association and by also hearing from the scriptures, by cultivating the knowledge, understanding the process, practice, practicing it, then we get more realization and with that realization our faith increases. Determination is related more to sense control, controlling the mind and senses. That you have to be very fixed in what you want. So both qualities are required in practicing devotional service. We want to it said one is known as third class, second class, or first class devotee, depending on his faith. So, we want to have strong faith. If, we have, if our faith is weak, then we can easily give up. And similarly, we have to be determined. If one is not determined, then we give up very easily. We think, oh, it's not very important. So certainly we can see the two qualities are interrelated. Hmm. Another question related to this question from Charu Chitra Devidasi. Thank you for Gurudev. And I am feeling I have great faith in Krishna consciousness movement, but I feel I don't have enough strength. How sh what shall I do? I don't have enough strength. That I have faith in Krishna consciousness, but not enough strength. 
you mean uh, <laughs> mind is willing but body is weak <laughs> something like that so what should you do well according to what you can do you should do you have to use your intelligence and think about what you can do you say you're you don't have strength so the strength you mean you don't have strength of mind or you don't have the physical strength in your body if you're talking about physical strength it's not a big problem you can find other people stronger people but you you must keep the mind strong strength of mind that's your determination related to your determination so we keep the mind strong by regularly chanting and hearing by having a good spiritual program that way you'll keep your strength up and what should you do you should work with devotees work together don't try to be an individual but create a team and work together help each other in krishna consciousness Thank you, Guru Maharaj. From Sitala Devi Dasi, every one of us, we are facing different degrees of obstacles. That's that due to our unsurrendering. Because we are not surrendering enough. That's why we have so much difficulties, challenges. Oh, because we have not surrendered, so we have many difficulties. Well, sometimes Sometimes there's not really a difficulty there at all. It's just in the mind that we're thinking this is a difficulty. Sometimes it's our mind which creates the illusion that, oh, this is a difficulty, oh, this is a problem. To somebody else, it's not a problem at all. So yes, you have to control the mind. There may be some difficulties there, but still we should not be disturbed by them we should be confident confidence is very important also in executing devotional service enthusiasm confidence and determination right so you must be more confident about this krishna conscious process and some you see some difficulties appearing in your mind. Don't worry about it. Go on with your hearing and chanting. And do devotional service. And gradually all these difficulties, all these obstacles will go away. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for your perfect class and reply. One hour's class. We are excited for the whole day. Then the last question from Bhaktin Gaujing. How can we explain to the non-devotees about our belief? In Bhagavad Gita, it is mentioned this is the principle of religion. And then, so how can we deal with the non-devotees? I am only telling the new people I'm practicing Bhakti Yoga, Krishna Consciousness. But it's, I feel it's not enough. So how can we explain? How can we tell them our belief and uh, explain the principles of religion? How can we explain to non-devotees our belief? Well, you ha we have to try to make them interested in understanding more about life. First of all, we can simply ask them, do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? And then you can explain to them how they're not the body, how they're the soul. So then you have to see how they react to this. Because you don't want to talk about Krishna until first of all you can get them to understand they're not the body. If they can, un if they can accept the existence of the soul, then you can speak more about the yoga process and about chanting Hare Krishna and how it helps to control the mind and how we can experience a higher consciousness and happiness people all want to be happy they're spending so much money to be happy so this is the way you can be happy without spending money freely 
Anybody can chant, any time, any place. This knowledge of bhakti yoga is a high, is, this is very special education. We spend so much time and money for education in the material world. Doesn't do us any good. It's all useless. But this knowledge about the soul, understanding the soul and the body and how to control the mind and senses, this is a real education. So we want people who are interested in education, who want to know more about life, just hear what we, how, how this bhakti yoga process. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki, Gaur Premanande.